Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where my partner John Coleman and I get the great pleasure of speaking with the virtual gourmet, John Mariani. How are you, John Mariani? Well, good morning, good morning. Uh, it's good to see you again, John. Uh, you know, um, I'm always fascinated by your newsletter, The Virtual Gourmet, because you, um, you you review restaurants all around the country, but you, of course, since you live in New York, you have a New York corner. So every week you have a, another restaurant. And I wonder, do you, and, and of course, you're very eclectic. You will review all kinds of restaurants, all kinds of uh, cuisine. Do you ever review things that are not truly restaurants, food, I don't know, uh, food services or things like that? Oh, well, I haven't for, uh, in the past for two reasons, uh, one of which generally food service is a completely other thing than a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And secondly, that if, say, you wanted to say, hey, how are, they, how, how are the food service at IBM? Um, well, you can't go up there, uh, i.e., my <clears throat> my readers and listeners and uh, people who are watching the show, they can't go to IBM and walk into the dining room. So there's there's no reason for me to do it. Good How, point. Talking about the first rule about generally being not very good, I found out recently by going up there and uh, invited to go up there um, because I was told that the food service at Yale University is extraordinary, meaning out of the ordinary. And they kind of tugged me in because they said we would try to be much, much more health conscious uh, for the students. Uh, we do have uh, vegetarian options. We have kosher uh, options, um, all sorts of things. And I said, well, that, that's good. But I, I'm pretty sure that uh, most universities and colleges are better than uh, what John Coleman and I had in uh, high school and uh, college, which pretty much was uh, how overcooked do you want your hot dog, <laughs> followed by a Snickers bar. And uh, uh, so, and, and in college, uh, I mean, I don't think in the four years that I went to Iona College in, in Nourishville, I don't think I ever ate in the, in the in the canteen, the cafeteria. The food was just miserable. It was, I mean, the choice at any given day was, was uh, always frozen. Sometimes defrosted, however, always frozen. Um, there's your grilled cheese sandwich. There's your hamburger that's been there for three hours. Um, so, but what are the possibilities? Okay, well, over the years, I must admit, things have gotten better and better. And the women's colleges have, in fact, had always had much better food. I remember my wife who went to Manhattanville uh, back in the 70s. Uh, there was like Sushi Thursday, you know, that was unknown. So things have gotten better and more health, but I was in no way prepared to for what I found at Yale. First of all, they have uh, what they call colleges are basically our, everybody else calls dormitories. And they just added two new whole colleges. Um, and they're designed in exactly the same good old Oxford University, uh, Gothic brick. They're very beautiful. It's an extra extraordinarily beautiful campus in New Haven, which is not an extraordinarily beautiful city by a long shot. Um, so one has to understand that among the Ivy League schools, they are so heavily endowed that, um, that Yale, for instance, a $42 billion endowment, second only to Harvard, which is $53 billion. That's a lot of moolah, especially for a university that in the 1970s was going bankrupt. Hmm. Well, uh, because of not only grants and because people who, who send $160 million to build up the food service and other things, Yale is sitting very, very pretty. Uh, consequently, and people always want their names on buildings, you know, a Coleman, Coleman Dining Hall. Um, so one guy gave $160 million to one dining hall to fix it up and bring in the best. And they really have brought in the best food professionals, people who had <clears throat> worked at the Culinary Institute of America, people who oversaw food service and some of the best um, restaurants in Las Vegas. And um, they have gotten together <laughs> and made a, a, a series of decisions, which was in one in one place, they, they really don't 
Uh, I mean, they, they have things seasonally, whatever's coming in seasonally. If they, if it's apple time, like right now, they'll put apples up there. They bake all their own bread. They have grown for them a lot of their uh, vegetables. They ha Everything is prepared there on the premises. And there are like seven, six or seven of these colleges, each with their own dining room. So you can go in there from morning until dinner time. They serve over 9,000 meals a day okay, in these various colleges. So you can go in there and breakfast and have cereal, buns, croissants, um, eggs, ham, et cetera, et cetera, all, all of that stuff. Then for for lunch, and it's it's amazing to see, at 12 o'clock, there's kind of like nobody there. 12.15, 300 kids come in and sit down. You know, and they know, and they're, they're, they're like cow. You can see the cow is moving down the hillside <laughs> into, these, into these dining halls. And uh, they will have a choice of, of course, salads. They will have a choice of two different kinds of New Haven style pizza, which I can get into sometime. Um, two different kinds, the Pepe's kind and the um, Sally's kind. Um, they will have fried chicken most days. The biggest seller is a, a massive uh, grilled cheese uh, sandwich that was that is made with extremely fine bread that they bake and uh, um, uh, dairy products and cheeses they get from New England. And this is an everyday thing. Um, they're, apparently, their they're, uh, grilled cheese and tomato soup uh, is their uh, biggest seller. And when I say seller, what this means is that tuition at Yale is 80,000 bucks a year. Mm. Mm. It's not as high as you can go, Harvard and Columbia and the rest. The, all the Ivy League schools are up in that 70 to $80,000 range. Within that is the $7,000 uh, food uh, service, um, uh, what you pay for food service. $7,000 all year long, or at least the nine months they're in session, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 7,000 bucks. You say, well, how could they do that? So 9,000 um, meals a day. The reason is that because Yale is so phenomenally rich and because it is basically nonprofit, so food service is not only uh, not expected to make money, but in fact loses money, which is subsidized by the good fathers and mothers of um of Yale University. So um, I should also mention that 45% uh, of Yale students don't pay a penny to go there. It's based on need. And uh, another 40% uh, will get grants and will get um, uh, scholarships and will get uh, and loans and so forth. So you really have to, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people who are going to send their, their sons and daughters to Yale are worth a whole lot of money. So $80,000 is nothing. So your son or daughter can wear a t-shirt saying Yale. And it's one, of the, it's one of the campuses I've ever been on where when you walk down the street, everybody's wearing a Yale, proudly fresh Yale t-shirt or hoodie or sweatshirt. I mean, everybody, they're very proud of it. Um, enormous number of Asians and so forth. Oh, Asians, what are they gonna eat? They have Asian food, they have sushi, they have one place within the main dining hall, which is called the Schwartzman Center, where the food is even a little bit better uh, and seasonal. And within that, they have kind of in a recess, a uh, place where you do have to pay extra, very minimally extra. They have a gelato bar, they have an espresso bar. And then you go beyond that to a wine and beer um, cocktail lounge, which is really very pretty. Um, and quite nice, and there you will pay a nominal fee. Um, so having told you all of this, it's like, well, so what? I can't eat there. In fact, you can. Um, you can get into the Schwartzman Center, um, which is their main dining, which goes back. Oh, that's, by the way, the Schwartzman Center dining hall. Was, you remember Indiana Jones, the last one they made, which wasn't very good, um, uh, and there's a motorcycle chase through Yale University where Indy and Indy teaches and they closed down during the summer Schwartzman Center for two to three months just to get this they, they, they turned it into a library they even put books there and took out all the food service but um, I can only imagine what uh, Universal Pictures paid for that for two or three months to take over that that space but um, if you 
if you don't go into the Schwarzman Center to eat, um, all you have to do is have a friend, know a professor, be an alumnus or whatever, and you can get into the other uh, places too. So if, obviously if you have a daughter who goes there, she'll bring you in to dine uh, with herself. So there is access to the public. And, um, you know, I, I was just there this past week and I was amazed, not because I'm uh, silly, nostalgic for the awful food that I had that I didn't have uh, when I went to college or Columbia, even at Columbia, I, may, I remember the food there was no better than in any other college I ever went to. But um, I just thought I would report to everybody that I also went to UCLA for a summer. This is way back in the 19th century. But there, the only thing I ever wanted to eat was uh, eggs and bacon every single morning. And instead went down to uh, Will Wright's um, uh, ice cream parlor and um, uh, ships for the rest of my meals down there in Brett. <laughs> so well, so uh, you said you needed years. to be invited in. Uh, so there's no pu general public access. You would need somebody that uh, is somehow associated with uh, Yale. Well, no, at the Schwarzman Center, you can. You can be a visitor. Oh. Um, I don't think most people know this or uh, they don't blast it. They don't put a poster outside, you know, say early bird special for all comers. Um, but what I'm telling you is that you you can. And uh, as I said, if, if, if you're on campus for 10 minutes and you speak to some students and say, would you mind if I came and tested it? Oh, yeah, come on in, man, you know, um, that sort of thing. But uh, I, I'm just telling people this because it's not only feasible to do this, but it is very, very expensive for the university and that kids today uh, have many, many more options than uh, they would have even 10 years ago. And uh, again, it's all health based. You know, the, even the beef is grass fed rather than rather than um, like corn fed. And uh, um, as I said, you could be a vegan very, very easily. And they even have a kosher kitchen in one of the colleges. It's um, amazing, really amazing. So is, is Yale in, in your in your knowledge base, which is not generally the university scene of, of the culinary uh, uh, exploits? Uh, do you know of other universities that might be similar, or is this pretty unique to Yale? Well, Johnson and Wales uh, University in Providence has its own. Uh, culinary school, like uh, the, the New England Culinary Institute, which is at the University uh, of sorry, of Vermont. Um, uh, they do. Uh, certainly the Culinary Institute of America certainly does. And any university that has, I would say, a um, nutrition program uh, is more than likely to have much better food. Um, probably even some of the agricultural colleges, you know, um, uh, Texas A and M and and so forth. I, I would I would think that they have better food. Mm. But, I, you know, John, um, in my yeah, in, in my experience here in Southern California, um, we lived near Cal Poly Pomona for many years, and they have a um, a college of uh, culinary hospitality school. I don't know what you call it, but it's essentially um, a cooking school. Mm -hmm. And they they're renowned for not for their school's food service, but they're renowned for the students mm -hmm. cooking at a restaurant. They have their own restaurant mm -hmm. so that the students actually serve dinner, cook dinner, serve dinner, plan the menus, all of that delicious yeah. cuisine, wonderful food. And I don't think they do it seven days a week. I think it's like Saturdays and Sundays. But there, if you go to a, uh, any college that has uh, a food school, a cooking school, I think you'll find somewhere they have uh, a opportunity for the public to, to dine there. Hmm. Yeah, they have to because the students have to cook for somebody. And, uh, and it's also more than likely that the quality of the ingredients uh, even in the, in the dining halls is going to be uh, better in that respect. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's true of all colleges now. I mean, when we went to school, uh, you know, is it so long ago that they have to have had <laughs> improvements put in since. Well, I, I'll, I'll say this, though, for uh, Celebrity Act 2 audience, fortunate enough to 
have uh, John Mariani, the Virgil Gourmet, who's a, a, a Northeasterner, uh, when the people out west or audience out west comes to see the leaves turn, uh, or they come from any other part of the country, uh, and you're in New Haven, in that general area, go get yourself a treat that you heard it here, because you probably didn't hear it any other place, and go in and, and do some fine dining at Yale University uh, Mess Hall. Not least because the dining out scene, the restaurant scene in New Haven is razor thin. So uh, there are many terrific restaurants. But then again, you know, to visit New Haven, it's uh, everything you'd want to see in New Haven is on campus, including their uh, fabulous uh, art gallery and the British Art Museum. Mm. And the Peabody Museum. But that's a two-day trip. That's, that's not, you're not going to spend a week in New Haven. Well, thank you, John. My pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.